the creator and the destroyer. A debate that is not new, but has found new ground in recent months on the internet, in the Roe v Wade case, and in ongoing toing and froing between people of different opinions and reasonings behind them. But I can't help thinking in all the talk, some of it directed towards women being seen as murderers, said a person who pops up now and again on the internet with a significant reach and audience of what appear to be real people. It was said that he thinking women having an abortion is as bad as a man being a rapist. Strange, I thought, that he doesn't use a similar comparison with one of death, but instead chooses to liken it to an act that in itself can cause a situation where some women find they are impregnated from, and then choose to take steps to sever all ties with that man. I try and understand why some do and some don't. Some may be able to move past that terrible act and give life, and maybe some don't want to feel tied to that soul through another, even if they are a long gone horrible moment of a soul. The reaction towards it from others is something to behold, but it feels like there is more to it. Not necessarily from the people with reactions and opinions, I get that, and they are fully entitled to them whether I agree with them or not. But the strange endless stream of establishment things to be involved in the process of procreation, from social rules and etiquette, to judgments and family pressures, pharmaceuticals to help you get pregnant and to stop it. And then comes the real bone of contention, the medical interventions to halt an unwanted pregnancy. It seems like a normal thing to have, right? Maybe not so much when you read about planned parenthood objectives and methods of controlling certain populations and various things that have gone under the radar, mostly. And we have to mention the booming industry surrounding abortion and the purchase and use of the tiny little baby parts and sometimes fully formed babies that they use for testing and creating vaccines and other medicinal procedures. It's quite horrific what they do and how they evidently must view people, children and babies as expendable products. And you know what? Some of us can see it and feel it everywhere. But not every loss of an unborn child is down to a deliberate act. Not everyone has a smooth ride and complications can arise at any time, with nature sometimes stepping in, apparently to see fit to end it at a certain point with a miscarriage. People don't seem to blame the woman then, don't have a go that her body decided to reject the foetus, but when it is her mind doing it, there appears to be questions that others have, even if it might not be their place to ask them perhaps. It makes me think of Shiva though. Shiva is known as the creator, protector and destroyer, Destruction and creation are inextricably linked. Having the power to create, protect and destroy seems the kind of power a man wouldn't want women to have, even though it is women who have all given birth to men, as far as we know. That doesn't mean they are happy about it. Maybe that's why there is talk of growing foetuses in pods. My article, Pod Life, for a little more on that, and turning girls into boys, removing their reproductive organs, and for boys who want to be girls, well, it limits their ability to ever have children as well, so it would definitely limit the gene pool as they might say. There have been sterilisation programmes here and there over the years, and it may well be that it is the ability to breed they are trying to quash, rather than just people in numbers directly, who really knows? That is still conspiracy theory, at this point. <laughs>